if you read the RLM's paper, are you excited about recursive language models in general and you want to play around? I've got the thing for you. An implementation of RLMs using Claude code primitives. Repo is available open source if you want to try it for yourself. No need for any additional setup apart from installing Claude code. Let's go. So I had this idea to set up the RLM in the Claude code hardness. And that's because all of the primitives are pretty much already available to us. So we have the ability to call the sub LLM using the sub agent's capacity in Claude code. And we can treat the main Claude code instance as the root LLM call. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take you through the repo very quickly. And this repo is publicly available. So by the time this video comes out, it'll be available to you. There's some instructions, but all you'll need to do is clone this and you will have this recursive language model set up available to you. All right. So everything uses Claude or Anthropic primitives. We've got the dot Claude file, which if you have used Claude before, you will be familiar with, and we have our skills set up. So we have our agent set up and we have our skills set up. So within the agent set up, we have the RLM sub core dot markdown. And all that is, is instructions that the agent follows to use the REPL script to search over context. Then within our skills, we have some scripts and the script here is the REPL. So REPL is the read, evaluate, print loop. And that's the core of your recursive language model setup. And this is just a simple Python script. It's about 400, I think it's, yeah, it's about 400 lines long. And that just gets the agent to run that ripple. And then we have the skill.md, and this is kind of your procedural stuff. So this is picked up by the sub agent to run that procedure. So to run this ripple script, and that's all it does. So it's pretty basic. Stepping back up to the top. We have the Claude.md. Let's find that. And this is high level instructions for Claude. And as you can see, very concise. We want to keep this as bare as possible because Claude is going to be doing a lot of the heavy lifting and delegating. So we want to keep it really high level and abstract. In fact, it's a good idea to think about your Claude.md files like your executive file. So as you know, if you're working with your executive, you wouldn't give your executive a ton of detail. You give them a high level task. Um, they like to see things at a high level. So does the Claude.md. So keep the detail out of here and just give it the high level abstractions it needs to execute a workflow. It's got awareness of the skills available, the sub agent to delegate that skill to, and then you've got the persistent Python REPL. So that's just the Python script that is used to execute that REPL process. And then this are kind of procedural instructions in how to interact with the users. That's it. Setup is very basic. Here's what we're going to test it on. We have sourced some public merger agreements. I'm going to open the one we're using. So we're using the Amazon and Whole Foods one. So caveat here, I'm not a lawyer, so I cannot validate any of this output. This is merely to demonstrate how Claude code can be used as a harness for the RLM. So let's open the Amazon one so you get an idea of what this thing looks like. So if you've read the RLM paper, you will understand that there's two dimensions to this. So there's document length. We were dealing with large context. You can see this is pretty large context. I wouldn't say hugely because, you know, I'd say something that's much bigger would be a data room, for example, with maybe hundreds of documents, but this is fairly large context just for a single LLM call, but more importantly, it's high complexity because this is some kind of merger agreement contract. So that's what we're operating on. I have already put that inside the Claude code instance. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pull up my instance of Claude code, which I'm going to run in dangerously skip permissions mode. So that's just so I don't have to keep pressing enter and keep approving Claude to make edits. So it's just going to go and do that itself. Okay. So we're in, right. So the first thing you want to do is you want to do the slash RLM, but actually 
before I do that, let me just show you the setup. So in here, you have your agents. And if I jump into my agents, you can see there, I've got the RLM subcore agent. So that's running off Claude Haiku. And the reason we set that to a smaller agent, because all it's doing is, it's doing search over that memory object. So the way this works very, very high level, because I've already done a ton of detail on it is instead of getting Claude to process all of that long context in one shot, what we do is we virtualize it by assigning it to some kind of Python object. And then we run that REPL loop over it and we use Haiku to run that REPL loop, REPL loop over it. And that enables us to process that context programmatically rather than forcing the LLM. And effectively what it's going to do is it's going to run various operations on it, like slicing regex and all of those types of things. Okay, cool. So that's the agent. You can see it's already in there. Now let's jump straight in to executing this RLM flow. So this will obviously flow straight through to the Claude MD and this is what Claude MD tells us to do. So this is the executive level. So all it needs to get started is a file path. And I've already saved that contract down in a, in a folder in this project. And you'll have that available to you as well. If you want to experiment, give a query as well. So actually I had a query available in the chat GBT chat. I'm going to bring that up because again, I'm not a lawyer, so I cannot validate any of this stuff, but good news is we have a research paper to say that it actually works. So I'm going to pick one of these queries. I'll probably use one. I have no idea what any of this stuff is. So let me just see, let's just pick one. Let's pick this. What are the conditions precedent to closing for each party? All right, let's pick that up and let us pull up our Claude code instance. So the first thing we'll say is the context is located. Let's save it as EX. Here it is. So that's the context. That's that legal contract that we pulled up earlier. And then this is the query. So I'm going to put it in tags. I don't think you need to, but this is just the way I am now used to prompting. Okay. Let's do that. So I think this is a relic personally, the tags, but you know, it's just muscle memory for me at this stage. So we'll wait and we'll see how Claude works through this. So it's already recognized it wants to start the RLM workflow, which is positive. And that's what we want to hear, or that's what we want to read. So it's initializing the report and scouting the context. Okay. You can see it's actually executed that in Python. Okay. So what it's done here is it's virtualized that memory. You can see that dot pickle and it's counted the characters. We've got 429,000 characters. This is exactly what it should be doing at this stage. It's notice it hasn't ingested all of that content. That's the main thing to notice here. So here it's having a peak. So this is the Nvidia arm share purchase agreement. Oh, so apologies. I think I showed you the Amazon one at the beginning, but actually I'm using the Nvidia share purchase agreement. So apologies for that. That was a little mistake at the start, but same difference. Doesn't matter. It will all be in the repo for you to play around with yourselves. So let me search using basic Python string operations at some stage. I'm hoping to see a handoff. You see, notice this is how it's processing context programmatically. It's not trying to reason over uh, such a large context, which would induce the context rot. What it's doing is it's locating those sections by performing Python operations on the virtualized memory. And you know, this is pattern matching. This is like regex. This is slicing in that way. Okay. So it's found the areas that it needs to pay attention to. So it's saying, let me find actual content of article seven and create chunks for the sub agent to analyze. So that's good. That's what we want. Let's see how it's handing off to the sub agent already. Hopefully this should actually bring to life how much more sophisticated this is than rag, because imagine trying to do this with rag, you just have a similarity search, some kind of semantic similarity search or keyword match, which would not have the flexibility. So I think it's, as always with live demos, it's 
found the observation, it's found the answer from that contract without actually having to use the sub agent. So, I mean, that's great to be honest with you. That's fantastic. And you know, why use more compute than you need to, but yeah, again, I was hoping that it would step into the sub agent. Just so you know, I have run examples of this where it did step into the sub agents and alloc alloc allocate tasks, but perhaps it was just able to find it without doing that. So here you go. That is what you get. And that's how quick it is to work through that and find the right clauses. I'm not going to read any of this because I'm not a lawyer and I can't validate it, but I would invite anyone that is who wants to play around with this to get on it and see if it actually holds up in production.